Hi everyone, Doc T here. Today on Sunday, I am in Tallahassee, Florida, and I'm broadcasting from behind a gas station. What's really cool is, um, so you hear a lot of noise, but I just parked under these beautiful trees. I mean, look how gorgeous these trees are. They're just monstrous oak trees. It is, that's just really cool. Hope I, I'm not making anybody sick here. But, um, so I thought it'd be kind of a nice setting to <clears throat> talk about what seems to be commonly happening with uh, horses today. Uh, yesterday and today, I've been hustling all my way up um, I-75, the turnpike, then 75 to uh, Route 10 to do some really great uh, clients. But I've gotten some new clients. And one person today asked me if I would just check her horse because she's not sure if it really needs doing, but if it doesn't, don't worry about it. Well, <clears throat> everybody's texting me and it just comes right down in the middle of it. Um, it's not whether the horse is going to show you that there's a problem. And that seems to be the biggest thing that I'm trying to get across to people. You don't want to wait until there is a problem. If you're talking about a mechanical thing like your car, you don't wait until the engine starts to have noises before you say, hey, maybe I should change the oil. And I know that horses' teeth aren't like, um, what do you call it, a, a car, a mechanical device. They're actually living, breathing things. And some horses just get used to it. They get used to the pain. So they continue to, in a way, suffer while you continue to work with a horse. And this one was a little bit um, concerned. This is the first time I was doing a horse. And she says, I'm, I don't know if I want to get the horse's teeth done, but I want you to check, make sure there's something going on. So my regular answer for these people is, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you just watch and let's see what the horse says, because I can tell you anything. I mean, I'm a human and humans lie, all right? But horses tend not to lie. They tend to tell you the truth. And sure enough, um, I kind of coached her to, for, to look for some things that might be subtle in this horse, like the head dropping down, the neck going from you know being upright to maybe horizontal, to actually the head being lowered. As the nose gets close to the ground, they look relaxed, the eye softens, the mouth starts to go back, back and forth sideways. They start licking and, and just feeling a lot better. And then they come up with their nose and they lightly touch me on the shoulder or my elbow or my back or my leg. They just lightly touch me, just saying, hey, that's really cool. Uh, and I told her all these things might happen. And sure enough, this horse started to do all the things I told her would happen. And I said, look, it's not how sharp the teeth are, it's the threshold of pain. The, the lower the threshold, uh, the more sensitive the horse is and the more responsive they're gonna be. But if they're higher, they're professionals, they work hard, they get the job done, they do what, they, what you ask them to do without really complaining. And sure enough, I'm gonna punch myself right there. Ah, that's better. Um, they, they work without complaining. Um, yet they are in pain. So I took this horse's sharp teeth out of the, uh, the cheeks and out of the tongue, and this is gonna allow the horse to move its mouth without restriction. It's gonna allow the tongue to move throughout the, the um, mouth and help uh, clean the teeth, uh, clean the mouth, get all the junk out of there and keep it healthy. Now here's the funny thing. That's all I do. There's no lateral excursion, balancing the mouth and all these adjustments with the incisors and stuff because it all comes secondary to the horse just starting to feel comfortable and allowing himself to chew. Now, if I did these live broadcasts every day, I could probably repeat this every day. It's not how sharp the teeth are, it's their threshold of pain. And we want these, these horses to live just about as long as these oak trees. And you want them to reach their full potential and not be fighting and, and, and trying to do the job instead of willingly do the job. And, and that's what we do here. So I'm getting a whole bunch of, um, uh, a whole bunch of uh, new clients up here. I think I got three today on a Sunday. Let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, three today. Uh, I've got one more farm to go to. It's just kind of exciting to, to spread the word that, and get a demo going. And if you ever want me to come to your place and do a demo, invite some people. I love teaching. I love talking about it. Um, and these people are pretty excited too. Anyway, I guess that's about all I have to say. I always ask you to like this when you see it, if you're watching live or if you're um, uh, not watching. I can't believe it. I got 
like a bunch of people, more than I've ever had uh, looking at this. Thanks to the hearts, thanks to the thumbs up. It's just great. Share this all you can um, and try and get the message out that um, floating teeth is a really important part of taking care of the horses. Um, um, the life, just making them really happy. Um, that's it. I'm, I'm done here. I'm going to Pensacola tomorrow. I end up in Louisiana um, later on this week, all the way out to uh, LSU on Saturday, Shreveport Sunday, and then off to Seattle uh, and working out there. So I've got a full book for two weeks uh, on the road again. Uh, shout out to my wife. Hey, Kath. Love you. <laughs> She's giving me hearts back. All right, my biggest fan. Anyway, I appreciate all of you watching, taking time here on Saturday, uh, Sunday, and uh, talk to you all later. Bye.